It's going to be about Drupal and Europe. So if you're in for Drupal and Europe, woo, you're in the right place. Cool. Um, could you introduce yourself in a short tweet or like? 140 characters. Well, 280 nowadays, right? Okay, but the, um, <coughs> so, last six years in the Drupal Association board, a chair of the Drupal Association board for two years, and the president of the German Drupal Business Association and the Icelandic Drupal Association. Uh, my name is Björn Brala. I'm a CTO at Swiss. I'm also a core subsystem maintainer for JSON API. Member of the Dutch Drupal Association, and uh, well, do a lot of work in quite a lot of different initiatives for Drupal itself. Hello, uh, I'm Lenny Moskalek, and uh, I'm uh, originally f started with Ukrainian Drupal Association, was uh, supporting and helping organize Drupal Camp Kiev. For the last five years, I've been as well on the advisory board for DrupalCon Europe, and uh, yeah, I'm a member of the IDA board nowadays. Um, my name is Esmeralda Tayov, and I'm a member for the Stichting Drupal Nederland, the Dutch Drupal Association. And in, 2030, in 2023, I did the first uh, meeting for the network of the European Drupal Associations, and that's why I'm here. My name is Imre. I'm CEO of digital agency React Online. I was board member of the Dutch Drupal Association for eight years. I co-started the Splash Awards with Bert and Taco way back. Um, I'm also a member of the board of directors of the Drupal Association and I'm also part of the DrupalCon Europe Advisory Committee since it started in 2018. So that's a great lineup. My name is Bert Boerland. I'm the chair of the Dutch Drupal Association, Stichting Drupal Nederland. I'm passionate about Drupal in Europe. So uh, I try not to be opinionated here and try to, <laughs> try to let the panel run it. Um, in, I think in Europe we're pretty good organized. And I think that the Dutch uh, um, are pretty good organized and doing it pretty well. How can we help other countries or other or, or bigger the world or other uh, 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 continents in a way that's beneficial for them and, and us, and us being the Dutch. Barry, uh, from yeah. a German point of view maybe, <laughs> or from Iceland, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. so good question. Um, first of all, we have Joy here from the Drupal Association, staff member who's actually, which is part of uh, the job to do. Like, so I think like if anybody wants to know a little bit more about that program, so if, uh, one side is to get the Drupal Association to like, speak to the local associations around the world and some of us are very well organized and others are very new and they need help. So at every Drupal con in Europe we meet and we've been meeting since probably five years, six years where we come together and we have very different needs and that's a little bit of a challenge. So one of the things that the Dutch association has been doing is to help with the website and like so I think like and we're probably going to talk a little bit more about that but I think that um, those, those of us that are better organized, and we have to list a couple of, like it is uh, Germany, Dutch, uh, uh, Netherlands, Netherlands uh, Belgium, uh, Spain, um, it's some of the Scandinavian ones, uh, Finland. Um, those are like probably the, the largest, or Ukraine. Ukraine of course as well. And then we have the same in the North America where we have the states who are basically taking care of the Drupal camps. They also have these associations or not, they are not called associations, but they are basically doing the same in their local regions. And then of course we have in Australia and New Zealand and, and Singapore now going to have DrupalCon. So I think to answer your question, to get like us, those who are like potentially mainly in this room, to somehow be connected better with the Drupal Association that then can help the needs of those who are connecting uh, and share experience. Smerelda, do you want to add anything to that? Um, well, uh, it, it's a funny question because you're asking like how can we from the, from the, from the, from the Netherlands, because we've got uh, quite a bit of experience like how to build a community, a local community, but it's uh, quite a dangerous question also because uh, each region has different social cultural needs 
and uh, like like the Belgians, they have they don't have one association, but they have like there's, there's a group and a platform. So it's a different kind of structure. And uh, I think, and that's also a problem for the DA if they want to get involved with the local uh, organizations that you need to um, uh, give this freedom of having different kinds of organization. And I think in NEDA, this is what we came up with. Like, oh, our our uh, business model is not something that might work in another country. So we need multiple models and we need to help each other like get there, like create their own model and create their own uh, uh, membership uh, organization structures. So if you want to think about how can we help, then um, well, everybody needs funding. <laughs> and that's something we can help because we have time, money, energy, to look for like uh, structures like the AU, like how do we get funding from the AU for the local organizations? And maybe we can put some more effort in that. And I think that's something that's overlooked, like how can you practically help each other? Yes, uh, as in, in Dutch, it's called uh, couleur locale. And I'm a big fan of that. I really do think that every country needs a different approach. Um, Jörn, do you want to add, add anything to that? Yeah, I think there's also, um, um, we shouldn't, one of the things we, we're looking into in Europe, yeah, we were really localized in what we do here in Europe. We're trying to help other European countries to up their game, let's say, or to, to make it easier to, to uh, be professional to the outside, to be professional to in their country. Uh, but I think there's also a chance where to, um, learn and, and give to the b broader community. I mean, the, as you said, there's other continents or other uh, uh, global sections, let's say, where uh, it's even harder for them to get started because there's no, f no real thing arranged. So it's really good for us to also have the platform with uh, the DA and connect to other uh, communities and also perhaps learn from them and not be uh, like, yeah, we're, we have our, our stuff together, let's say, and uh, uh, stop learning from what happens in, for example, the US and well-organized uh, communities there. So if, I, if I can add, uh, sorry to like, it's actually really important what, see, what you talked about, about the funding. Yeah. So if you think about it like this, these are normally non-profit organizations. And a non-profit organization is then accept, exempt like they don't have to pay taxes. So they have like a really uh, a mission statement that is really focused and normally it's around education, educating about Drupal and open source and all that. So then they get the tax exemptions. And when I pay a money to a local association in Germany that has that status, I as a company get tax benefits from that as well. Or like, you know, so, so like the funding model, because the DA is organized the same way, but only in the United States. So it means that if I give money to the DA, I don't have the same tax benefits as I would have like if I give money to a German non-profit. So, but, but just to keep in mind, this is nothing that we are only dealing with. This is what all global non-profits are doing. And what we need to learn from, and like, you know, we talked about that with Type 3 as well. We need to learn from the, the World Scout Foundation. You know, we need to learn from the Union of International Cancer Control. How are they, these global nonprofits, actually organizing it with the local associations and then basically also bringing money in here and then diving, giving them part of it up to the, the umbrella. So like, I think the more we think about that model and that can be taken all the way to like being FIFA or, you know, in football or like, you know. So I think that we need to be stronger there, but we need to get that led by, by you know, something more. Imre, you're currently uh, on the DA and we're firmly on the SD Stichting Drupal Nederland board. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, money earned, money spent, it's coming in in the Netherlands, so it should stay in the Netherlands, right? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so uh, I think if you have like a revenue stream that you have the time and resources to spend, that is great. For a long time, we've had the revenue stream, but we didn't have the time and resources to spend it, right? Or spend it in a way like with a structure and a plan. Uh, and now, now we do, there's good things happening. There's radio commercials, a lot of stuff happening, right? But I know the Belgians, for example, they also have a, uh, a, 
healthy revenue stream, but they don't have the time because they all do it in the evenings, right? So how do you go about that if you have the money? I don't think there's a, essentially something wrong with having a, a, some, a portion of the revenue go up. I think there is, however, uh, a resistance or a fear of, hey, where's my money going? So I think we need to find a way in collaborating that revenue stream, where does the money go and what happens with it to the point that we, that we benefit from it back. So not our money doesn't disappear in the umbrella, but we get something in return. That could work very well. So an interesting thing is uh, a couple of years ago, the, the Drupal lead from Burkina Faso he reached out to me and he asked me, hey, we now also have a partner program like you do. Can you help me sell my partnerships within your country? And it was like, hmm, we have a partnership program. Uh, what will I tell uh, the Dutch? Say, hey, I have a second partnership program for, for Burkina Faso. That is, that does, that's not logical. That doesn't make sense because we have a partnership program here. So I told them, well, I cannot sell your packages in my country, but I can help you sell your packages in your country. And that's, I think, the collaboration that we need to find there. Lenny, I think you have yeah, different uh, needs. Uh, what I wanted to add uh, is, first of all, about the collaboration and communication. So I think it's been in our minds for a while and uh, there are quite a few discussions that are ongoing uh, about the role of the DA as a matter of fact in all this, in, in a bigger scheme of things. Also how the DA can be more helpful to the local association and Joy here precisely as, as has been mentioned, so she's the person like who is reaching out in particular in the, in the US. So I think the goal is for the local associations to work closer with the DA and for the DA to be efficient in the way to help out to build these bridges and to help out to share the knowledge, share the experience, and if necessary and if possible, of course, like to help out other associations in any way by sharing the information, by coaching, by sponsoring, because if we are talking about different regions indeed, so we are talking about Netherlands, for instance, or Belgium, who have excess of funds, but think about Burkina Faso. <laughs> I don't believe that that's one of their problems, is it? And I know for a fact that like, there are quite, quite a few ongoing initiatives that are supported by one company or like, like really small group of people about the education in, uh, in Africa. And Africa still, it remains one of the regions where I, I dare say we're not doing actually a great job in communication with uh, the, the Drupal community over there. And that's a <laughs> that's entire continent of the people that are lacking and being basically isolated within the, uh, within the community. So that's one of the things that we should keep in mind. And back to the point, I think that Drupal Association should be more involved in order to build these communication schemes, communica uh, communication bridges. So one of the questions here is the DA, sorry, DA stands for Drupal Association for those who didn't know. Uh, the Drupal Association uh, has, an, has or had an image of being America focused or America first, uh, sorry for the wording. Um, is that still the case? And if so, how can we change the perception? If I may just like to start and then I will yeah, pass the, the mic to you, buddy. So I think that's indeed, that's something that we were um, we were vocal about for a while. And the good thing is that our voice has been heard. Uh, because in the recent conversations with uh, Tim Doyle in particular, he was saying that yes, we know about this and we want to be closer to Europe. I think the good sign is that Joy is today here <laughs> with us learning about how the, the events being uh, are happening in, uh, in Europe. And um, still, of course, there is a lot of work that has to be done and uh, expansion of the, of the area of interest to include not only America as for the first and foremost, but Europe or Asia for that matter. I think that's one of the goals still. So the Drupal Association is a US company. So that's like if we just start with like employer, employer laws and, and like how to be able to hire like all of you you maybe some of your companies also have like 
you know, it's not easy to just hire a person from like, since uh, that was moved away from Belgium um, a couple of years, like uh, many years ago, it was then moved into the US. So like, that's like a, so it is a US company, <laughs> right? US nonprofit that follows all of that rules. You know, that being said, we still have some freelancers or we are working with a middleman company to be able to employ people from elsewhere. And recently we've been having, uh, so back in the days we had a person from uh, the UK and we've been having a person, people from Spain employed through like a, you know, but that's not the easy thing. Like, you know, and a non-profit especially, you know, it, this all needs to be accepted by all kinds of financial restrictions that we have. Okay, that's number one, just to be like on the facts. Second thing is, is that the DEA is focusing, has been focusing on two things mainly. That's engineering, which is actually just to keep our infrastructure up and running, keep everything for the issue queue, Drupal.org, everything that we are doing, like that's, that's the main, like half of the staff is just taking care of that. So when we are funding the Drupal Association, which is yes, a, a US entity, we are actually funding the Drupal project because of the infrastructure. And the second thing that the, pro that the DA has been focusing on is uh, programs. And program, one of them is DrupalCon. And DrupalCon North America, and then they did this franchising model with uh, Europe, where like uh, that is being done and now for the first time in Asia. So like they are trying to expand that and maybe one day like North America will also be just part of a franchise thing. So these are the two things that, the, you know, and because of our, um, because we are organizing DrupalCon in North America and the staff is mainly from the US, it has been perceived as being like more focused on that. But I just want to like say that, that those have been the two focuses and now we've been adding to it like, you know, marketing, fundraising. So we've been getting grants from uh, Europe actually from a German fund, the DA, to um, help with the development of GitLab and all this stuff. So like we are going more and more into like Europe to get like funding so we can do the work that we need to do for the Drupal project. And our main goal is to support the Drupal project. So our main goal is not to grow the, the US market. You know, it just tends to be that there's a lot of companies in the US that are using Drupal. C can I add something to that? Because so, uh, I've been part of the board for for a little over six months now, right? And I think a big big part of the board, if not more than half, is are not, are people f not from the U.S. Right now, if you work like from from your, from a region where you are, it's very easy to to think from the bubble that you're in and write like dates in U.S. format, stuff like that. I've been I've, we've been telling them that. So this is this is the small things that we can improve on, right? But it's, I mean, the, the Drupal Association and the Drupal Association board is very open to the feedback and, and it wouldn't want anything other than be open to, to all the associations in all the regions. Like, like Dries said this morning, the reason that we, the, the thing that differentiates, uh, differentiates us is, is, our, is the passion that we all have in all the regions. So, the, I mean, the Drupal Association would be crazy to think like, that's all, all well and fine, but we run it from here. No, it's the opposite. But we need to have keep the dialogue open on this. Exactly. It's important to understand what, what, what we have in common instead of what separates us. I mean, and there's a whole lot more that, that we have in common. I do agree on that. And date format and small stuff apart because it matters, language matters. But it's good to see that the diversity in the board, it will reflect in the diversity of our attitude. Bjorn, do you want to add something to that? Um, I think I think we're 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 fighting an image that might be a little bit outdated. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the main issue here. Long time it might have been most U.S. focused. It might have been uh, in communication and how things might be marketed. That was mostly in a U.S. target. Yeah, because the people who uh, work on it work there. Um, but I think we moved away from that and you see a, a, a lot of actions by the DA to show that they're uh, working outside of the US and here we're not. So I think we're working against yes. all superstitions. As, a one, as one of the criticasters, I might call myself, of the DA in this post uh, VZW, Vereniging uh, on the Winstoogmerk era, I do think that it's a thing of the past, to be quite honest. We, we should look at what, we, what combines us instead of what 
separates us. So that is also true for, uh, for Europe. It's true for the whole world, by the way, but also for Europe. Um, Ms. Ronaldo, you said something about NEDA. What does it stand for and what is it? Well, NEDA is the network for the uh, local local associations in, in Europe. And, and actually, we've got uh, other associations or individuals from around the world joining us to talk about the struggles that you have as a volunteer organization or, you know, as a, a, a unity that tries to establish a community in your uh, area. And we've uh, come up with NEDA because in Europe we have some specific uh, issues that we felt were not heard or were not uh, addressed by the DA and we felt like we could uh, help each other by sharing our experiences so more uh, bottom-up local associations getting together in a very informal way and that's why it's a network and it's not a uh, foundation or, or, or a uh, stifting and um, I think if you see what's happening around the world that there are local people that might not be in association but the, like I talked to uh, a guy from India or no from Pakistan yesterday uh, who wanted to join uh, your uh, local uh, initiative uh, program and he was unable to get into the Zoom call so it was a bit of a bummer but he's a guy that has a company and from the company he organizes Drupal camps and it, he funds it through the company so it's a very different way of organizing a community that is more like one company is very active and is very uh, well, vis visibly active and I think if the DA wants to uh, uh, help local groups, then it's not just local associations. And I think that's a very important uh, thing. And uh, you talked about uh, how to, can the DA uh, change the image of being US uh, centered. And one of the things that was an issue in the past uh, was that any other upcoming unity of uh, associations or organizations that was a bit larger than just one country was actually hindered and uh, not helped at all by the DA but more like viewed like a possible competition for resources and I think if the DA really wants to uh, be for the whole world then this mindset needs to go and it, is, it needs to be the umbrella where everybody can uh, join even if you're a foundation or an association or whatever you are uh, and you know keep the local perspective in it so yeah, the NEDA is coming like every two months we come together online and we just talk and uh, share the resources and this is also helping the project that Jörn is working on for the website, sharing code. Yeah. For the and it's free for anyone to join, right? It's not just for people who are in associations. No, it's not just for exactly. people who are in, exactly. because the Belgians don't have one. Also, uh, for example. Uh, and the uh, Ukrainian, when I uh, looked online, like finding a Ukrainian uh, association, there isn't one, there's lots of groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So Jörn, can you say something about the successes of NEDA? Or the failures, but I would like to focus on the, <laughs> no, the positive no, no, side. No, let's let, uh, it's quite positive. I mean, uh, I've been to a few of the meetings also in the DrupalCons, and it's really, <coughs> uh, uh, what I really fe feel is good about NEDA is the fact that people do really want to uh, seek each other to help each other, yeah? So we're, uh, trying to pull each other up uh, or pull yourself up to others and uh, uh, go through that together. So that's really helpful. And it's also for, for example, for, for us, for the Netherlands, it's really fulfilling to be able to help other countries and uh, get up and running. And you see such a widespread of, of uh, organization amount of organization in different countries that there's there's a lot of lot to learn one of the challenges I think we have is to how do you efficiently efficiently share that information share your learnings I mean uh, uh, it's really e easy to think yeah you could have a, a, a knowledge base on how you do different things it's really f easy to think up but getting that filled getting that correct, getting that being worth something is really, really, really hard. So, so, to, so to your point, Björn, um, <coughs> I've seen three or four spreadsheets with lists of, of European Drupal camps over the past decade or so. It's being rec recreated all the time. Now, the Drupal Association and, and the Dutch Drupal Association, we all have like Google platforms where we can share stuff 
but then we need to do it. So, so any association, the Drupal association as well, can facilitate in right. So in supplying the tools, but it is us that we need to to share and not recreate over and over again. A fool is a tool is still a fool, by the way. So I don't think that the technology is limiting nor enabling it. It's mostly not a problem. But no. So a great success is the event organizer working group. So I think the key is, if there's a group that comes together, like you need to be heard somewhere, and you need to actually. It needs to be a, a, it's it's not just one way, it's like, you know, so the event organizer group had like one of these Excel sheets. And uh, we thought like, wow, we are like, what do we do in our job? We have really structured content and we build like content, content management systems. Like, why are we not just doing this on Drupal.org? And uh, one of the first things that the event organizers group, working group did was actually to contact the DA. It was back then Rachel. And we deliver them with fields and we say like, can we maybe just have a content type on Drupal.org under, and then you create a list, which is like not the most beautiful one, but like that actually has slash events. And within a very short time, they actually just build that. Now you can put your event onto the Drupal.org. You can see the events and we can connect the events to the organizations and the speakers and the profiles, which actually amplifies your, your profile as a company because you can actually see the, the, the things that you have sponsored. So if you are an organization, take a look at your organization. And if you have been sponsoring something and you're not like seeing that on your profile, then you have to speak to the leaders or something. But it's a great thing where like actually people just came together and we did a little bit, we did the work, which is basically like deliver like these 30 fields. And then like the DA, I think Tim Lennon and co, they did it within a day or two where this was just put up and, and, and bam, actually sheets should not be anywhere anymore. It's already on Drupal.org. So even the speaker, yeah, the speaker's connection and everything like so DrupalCon Barcelona, like if you're a company, you even get like a little bit more weight, uh, credits. So like it's better for your organization because you're contributing to Drupal and all this stuff. So and that's very. I think that the gamifying thing in Drupal.org is one of the best things that's happened. In the Netherlands, the RFP process from the Dutch government nowadays sometimes lists you have to have X amounts of points on D.O. Uh, sorry, that's short for Drupal.org. So I think that the model is working and that um, and that we can be proud on that that's happening. Um, by the way, did you ever do a panel uh, thingy and then you get? text a lot because your son just graduated. So yay for me. Oh, <laughs> <ooh>. <laughs> and for my son, actually. <laughs> so that's fun. And, 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 did, he, and, and did he get a call? Because I heard that in, in, in Netherlands, you get a call from school. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Uh, and if you don't get a call, it's good. So when I graduated, and now I'm talking like 30 years ago, all my friends called at five or six. Wow. <laughs> Either way. Um, so that's good. So. Um, one of, uh, I was hinting, by the way, Bjorn, uh, one of the successes I think that the, the NEDA did, or maybe the Stichting Drupal Nederland did, is share the code base of the Drupal NL website. And I know that, well, yeah, that's actually a big thing, because we give code away. That's yeah, a new concept, but <laughs> can you tell a bit about that? Yeah. A um, few years ago, the Drupal uh, site was uh, re Drupal.nl was rebuilt, so we uh, hired contractors to get things rebuilt. And uh, a while back, we thought about, uh, uh, we had a quite a good strategy on how to make the Drupal.nl uh, communication site for people who need to use Drupal, instead of making it uh, for the Drupal people, make it for the people who need to use Drupal. So that's something that's really important in making sure that business eventually also comes to diff different companies that implement Drupal. Um, we saw a hole in, the, in, in, in how Europe uh, sites were uh, looking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, were, there were, were not that many great sites. So we started a pilot with, uh, with a few different countries to have a look if we could actually share the code base of Drupal.nl for different uh, sites. So the first one that came online was uh, Drupal France for, for DrupalCon Lille. Was, was fully based on the, the code from uh, Drupal.nl. Uh, they did a great job on that, uh, and uh, uh, Germany and uh, also Belgium are, and Spain and uh, <laughs> Switzerland. Uh, there's quite a few countries right now who are uh, closing in on to launching actually on the code of Drupal.nl. We, uh, after the initial pilot, we actually open sourced it and uh, put it on uh, Drupal.org. 
So uh, with uh, basic English content and, and installable for anyone in, uh, in, uh, in Drupal, in the Drupal community actually. And um, that's been working out quite great. Actually, of course, there's always issues because uh, the, the every country has their own language, but there's also different, different business models, yeah? Uh, where we do uh, partnerships with co companies, there's a lot of other countries that do less of that, perhaps, and a different, have a different model on that. I've so uh, I think that's, that's going pretty good. It's taking its time, of course, but, uh, but uh, people are uh, putting energy in and uh, so, so, so be trying honest, to uh, help where we can. Mr. Are the templates and the designs also used? Yeah. Right? So, so I'm part of the marketing working group within the Drupal Association, and there's good things happening there. There's new people that came in, and there's the marketing is now a separate entity with separate funding within the Drupal Association. And it's, in my opinion, been an Achilles heel for, for the bigger part of in Drupal's existence. So this is a good thing happening. And I was telling them, do you, do you know, my team, what's happening in Europe with this website and the, and the template. Now that, we've, that we are launching the redesign for Drupal and Drupal.org, do you know what's happening? And I was sharing these European websites on how they look now and what's happening, what's being done with the, the new website. And the team was like, we didn't know at all. So what's happening there? So there's all these different websites, a new brand being rolled out, but also the brand that we saw in, in Dries' presentation this morning. I said, let's make sure that we get all these countries in and make that a little bit more consistent because it's time. And, th and the same goes for the messaging because like, exactly. you know, like one thing is the brand. So like we now we have a different look on Drupal.org versus those sites versus every other site, you know, so like it's a big inconsistency there. So I think like we need to work on that, but that's going to be easy with the uh, with, uh, European sites yeah. because they are very close to how the look is now being evolved. But then it comes to the messaging part. You know, is it just like, you know, who is actually auditing that? Is it just like okay for any organis like local association just to say anything about Drupal? You know, like, should that be okay? Should, you know, like I say, like, you know, I, if it was for me, you know, we would have shut down Drupal DE a long time ago. Sorry, go on the site and tell me if this is a good thing for Drupal brand. You know, and not just Drupal DE, we have many of them. It's just an example, but we are changing that, uh, luckily. But like, can we just, you know, should that be allowed? Like, should there be a trademark policy? I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, should we, should the trademark become a little bit stronger and saying like, hey, if you, because if you want to say that you're going to do Drupal Con, and I don't know how many of you were at, in Darmstadt, in Drupal Europe? Yeah, a few of you. So it was not allowed for us to call that a Drupal Con. It was because the DrupalCon has a trademark policy and like all kinds of stuff attached to it. So therefore like we could only call it Drupal Europe because like there is a certain things that you have to fulfill as a, as a as DrupalCon brand to be able to talk about it. And in my opinion like, so that got changed because Kuoni got it licensed and then also was a license given now to Asia. So, and, and there are certain things that they have to fulfill. Like there needs to be like, certain tracks, there needs to be volunteering, there needs to be this and that. So how far should we go in those guidelines actually to actually stop things and, and make, uh, you know? I, I, I'm not saying that like, but I'm just putting it out like this is the stuff that we need to think about. The discussion is good. And I've made a joke about Dutch couleur local, which is not a Dutch word, but it is, I think it's very essential that you also have something that is recognizable for your target, target audience, which is different from Germany to the Netherlands and from Flemish to watch Wallonia and, and, and on. I, I, th I think there's, there's, there's an opportunity there, yeah? Because now we have like basic English content for the European sites. I mean, we could work closer with the uh, marketing from DA to also make sure that the content is perhaps uh, a little bit uh, closer to also the marketing goals of uh, Drupal in, in as a whole. And that could be even uh, eventually. I mean, we have Starshot and things were being done there. I mean, why, why isn't there a third option eventually where you say, give me a local site, for example, yeah, instead of, 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 yep. of, of hiding it away into, uh, into a, a random project on Drupal.org. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah? So it could help if also in, 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 in the vision that Drupal is about communities and communicate to the, the people who come to Drupal.org. Oh yeah, if you want to start a community or 
this is what we bring our communities and how we help our communities to grow. So that's a, perhaps a good two-way street to, yes, to move indeed. forward. Yes, so first one for Lenny, if that's okay. Lenny, does the Ukraine need a local association at this point, do you think? Uh, that's a good question, to be honest, because we were discussing that for quite a while. Um, and I think that at some point uh, we, there will be Ukrainian association. But as you can imagine, currently the priorities are relative it's in a different direction, sadly enough. Um, as a matter of fact, through over, like, over these years, we got really, really solid structure of the Drupal enthusiasts, myself including, that were organizing the events, but with like, I think last year when uh, Drupal Camp Q was ha happening, we had around 450 people, right? So at that time it was the biggest event. Now Drupal Jam took over. <laughs> um, and, but we started to, to realize that as well that we need, uh, we need more help, we need more hands and um, as as more people are attending, obviously more things you have to take into account. Um, and from the point also of the organizing the finances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so association is necessary, especially for the bigger communities. I think it's inevitable when like that you're coming to some point of growth that you have to do that in order to keep things in order. Yeah, understood. Um, yes. well, can I, can I uh, make one comment about these uh, trademarks? Um, because uh, thinking about this, it's a good point. If you think about the, uh, from, a company, from a company view, like as is, um, um, but it's not a very good idea from a bottom-up view because it gives a lot of thresholds. It becomes more uh, difficult to organize stuff if there's a, lo a long list of, uh, of uh, cadres, of, uh, of yeah, rules that you have to follow. So uh, if you think about trademarks, Sa keeping trademarks safe and not allowing crappy websites. Uh, well, maybe then there is no website, and well, maybe then there is no platform for uh, for uh, people to come together. So that's a, ver a very tough decision. What are you going to do? Who's who's more important? Oh like yeah, the, the starting people or like the view of? I think Betty was addressing it as a thought idea, right? Not as a as something that has to be put down, but something like we should think about. What is the strength of a brand versus what's the strength of a grassroots and, organization? And also, like I would say that it's not only enforcing the rules, but rather you're giving the opportunity because if there is like the code base that you can use already, like and reuse, and just you need to spend some time on on the deployment process. It's not you know asking to build something according to the rules. It's providing the opportunity and saying like, okay, guys, be reasonable. Use something good that we created instead of having this whatever this is. Yeah, and just to be clear, there is a trademark today for Drupal, trademark and and for DrupalCon, and that is pretty heavy. And there is a policy, and and, and, a, a, and a lot is allowed actually. Yeah, and 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 a lot is allowed, and like we are allowing much more than actually you know. And and the question is always going to be. Is it hurting more than giving benefit? And that's exactly what you're 100% right. That's exactly the line that we need to find. It's like, where can we find that middle way? Yeah. So, so okay, if I can make, I don't know if uh, the time that we have left, but uh, uh, to you, um, <coughs> Esmeralda, if the, the sentiment to like the DA wanting to put things down, right, and the DA wants stuff or doesn't want stuff, uh, I want to make it clear that because I'm, I'm part of the board now, but I've also been along, like, like for years, part of the local region, local community, also part of the tech talk, which is even smaller, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but we have, we have Joy here, we have Mikaele, we have Buddy, we have Lenny, so uh, there's nothing more that, that the DA would want as to cooperate and make Drupal better together. So have no fear. There's no Drupal Association going to lay down rules on you. But just let's let's dialogue and discuss and I keep. That's the main point. Yeah. Hey, we've got time for one or two questions, three actually, uh, from the audience. So who has a, a question that thinks? Yeah. Go ahead. I think to elaborate on Esmeralda, um, uh, it's not about laying it down or laying down the rules, but it may be overwhelming for someone that's a closed group or is not organized or uh, to, 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 to see that an organization. Uh, has these trademarks and, and really wants to help, but they're still struggling how to get it. So I think that's what you meant by, by bottom-up. So we gotta help them 
uh, ask the right questions and, uh, and ease them in for, for this kind of things, I think. And there's no wrong or right. I know that WordPress, for example, has WordCamps, which are very mm, structured, let me put it this way. Limited is a word that I wanted to say, but it's not precise. So there's no good or right. They're just doing it differently. That's what I think, at least. Any other remarks and or questions from the audience? About Stichting Drupal Nederland. We're doing, for example, radio commercials on BNR. BNR. Who, who heard that on the radio? That's cool, right? We yeah, have more hands. Come on, show hands. <laughs> So I want to give you one more example. If you have the time, if you go to the Dries note from Portland, because again here, talking about consistency, we have three DrupalCons coming up. So there's going to be DrupalCon Barcelona. <laughs> then there is going to be DrupalCon in Singapore, and then DrupalCon Atlanta. Woo! From Atlanta. So if you look at the, like this is something that, you know, where, where you see how far behind we are in actually enforcing any policies or rules or anything on our brand, we have this beautiful brand for DrupalCon, yeah. and, and like it's so much working. And if you go just to the Dries note, and you look at the promotion of these three events, this is all called DrupalCon, and the videos were completely different. And they were so different that it was like, it, was a, it could have been like, you know, this technology and that technology, like, you know. And again here, like, if you don't get this, we are never gonna succeed as a brand. So like it would have been really easy just for all three like somehow if that had been like censored a little bit. <laughs> I'm just talking about the examples where we can do better and it should be very easy by providing like little intro, little outro, you know, like hey, if you're doing a DrupalCon then you just use this. If you're doing a Drupal jam, Drupal camp, you know, then like use this, but we somehow always try to in reinvent everything. Yep. And it takes so long time for us. You know, so we can do better, right? Yeah, I was I was just say, saying like recently, very often I think that uh, we are like each of us we are doing very decent job whatever we do, but somehow we we are failing miserably in terms of the communication one with another, and especially when it comes like to the to the uh, communities Europe, America, and Asia these days, or like South America as well. So we are not doing terribly good job over there at all. So that's something for sure that I totally agree with you about it. We need to, we need to improve. And maybe the last thing, if you're from an organization that is not supporting your local association and also not the DA, please like come into a conversation with us and we can help you how to always convince. Always us, always us. <laughs> here, here. Uh, because the thing is like, if we are ever going to get this under control, we need to have somebody to coordinate it. And in order to actually find us a position at the DA, we need to like also have people to support the DA. You know, so we need both. Exactly. So it's, we not have it's not a or, it's and. Correct. And, 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 yes. and we need to, maybe we can figure out a way that like, the money somehow goes in exactly. here and then we put 10% up or I don't, like I'm just saying something. But yeah, I'm just yeah. mentioning something. Like, but the thing is, like, if we're ever going to get this under control, we need to have a good staff. And the DA is, I think you have 17 employees at the moment. And like, that is nothing based on the work that this mighty team is doing, the engineering part and all the stuff, like it's ridiculous what they're actually doing. And we want to do so much more, but it's just restricted by funding, unfortunately. So on that note, it's an and and not an or. Uh, I want to <laughs> shake your hands because <laughs> that's what it is. Thank you so much for this panel. So <laughs>